The first case was a 30mm yellow mass in the radical nephrectomy specimen from a 44-year-old lady. And this is a good example of an oncocytoma. The typical histology of an oncocytoma is cells with granular eosinophilic cytoplasm containing round uniform nuclei with very rare mitoses, if any. And they are often hypocellular or myxoid areas and the pattern of the cells may be tubular, nested and cystic. On low power you can appreciate the pink staining abundant cytoplasm and a tubular and nested pattern here. In this field we are zooming towards a hypocellular, rather myxoid area, typical of oncocytoma. On higher power the nuclei are seen to be regular with no mitotic activity. Finally, one feature I personally find quite useful in oncocytoma is that if you look at the edge of the tumour, it seems to merge rather imperceptibly with the tubules in the normal kidney. The second case was the radical nephrectomy from a 60 year old female containing a 30 mm yellow mass. And this is the commonest type of adult parenchymal kidney tumour, and that is a conventional clear cell renal cell carcinoma. These account for around 70% of all renal cell carcinomas. The cut surface is typically yellow and the tumour is composed of sheets of clear cells. The nuclei and nucleoli show variation in size. The lowest grade tumours have very small regular nuclei with inconspicuous nucleoli, whereas the highest grade tumours have large nuclei with large nucleoli. On low power you can see sheets of cells with clear cytoplasm, and small nuclei. On higher power you can see fairly prominent cell membranes and at a higher power the cells have got clear cytoplasm, small nuclei and inconspicuous nucleoli. So this is a low grade tumour, probably grade 2. The third case was a hemorrhagic mass, approximately 85 millimetres across, in the radical nephrectomy specimen from a 41-year-old female. The diagnosis here is chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. Chromophobe renal cell carcinomas account for approximately 5% of all renal cell carcinomas. Typically, they have a light brown cut surface and histologically are composed of sheets of cells with pale or pink cytoplasm. The cells have a very prominent outline with producing a cell wall type appearance. The nuclei are surrounded by a clear halo or perinuclear halo and the nuclei themselves are rather irregular producing an appearance similar to raisins hence the term raisinoid nuclei. In this example of chromophobe RCC, the cytoplasm is abundant pink staining. On higher power you can see the perinuclear halos very nicely and also the plant-like appearance with the prominent uh, cell outlines producing a cell wall-like appearance. And at the highest power you can appreciate the rather irregular nuclear outline producing an appearance similar to that of a raisin. The fourth case was the kidney mass from a female of 35 who had tuberous sclerosis. This tumour is an angiomyolipoma. 
And geomyoli pomas are now known to be part of the Pecoma family of tumours. They account for approximately 1% of renal tumours and they may, as in this case, be associated with tuberous sclerosis. As the name suggests, the tumour is composed of smooth muscle, blood vessels and fat. But to low power you can see sheets of spindle cells with pink cytoplasm and some fat cells between them. The lesion is benign with regular small nuclei and although there isn't any immuno on this case, the tumour shows positivity with HMB45 and melan A. The fifth case was the vertebral biopsy from a 76 year old man and this contains metastatic adenocarcinoma and in this case it is prostatic adenocarcinoma. Prostatic adenocarcinoma frequently metastasizes to bone and the confirmatory markers are PSA and PSAP. And here you can see a rather sclerotic metastasis of adenocarcinoma we are zooming into a well-formed gland typical of prostatic adenocarcinoma. This of course will show positive staining with PSA or PSAP. The sixth case was the 69 year old man who had a truss biopsy with a PSA of 11.4 pyrat 4. This is an example of granulomatous prostatitis. There are many causes of granulomatous prostatitis, but the most common are a history of urinary tract infection or post-op such as TURP. The importance here is that granulomatous prostatitis may clinically and pathologically mimic prostatic carcinoma and there is inflammation and destruction of duct epithelium producing a granulomatous inflammatory infiltrate. And this of course may cause the PSA to rise. On low power, the granulomatous prostatitis has a rather nodular appearance. The nodules are gran the granulomatous inflammatory infiltrate. Higher power reveals the cells to be histiocytes and lymphocytes with maybe a few polymorphs. And elsewhere there may be active prostatitis. Here you can see a duct containing neutrophil polymorphs with damaged epithelium. And of course this is what results in the granulomatous inflammatory infiltrate forming around the duct. The seventh case was the scrotal cyst from a 22 year old man. This is idiopathic scrotal calcinosis and you see deep purple calcified nodules in the dermis and this is usually surrounded by a granulomatous inflammatory response. Scrotal calcinosis is the sort of condition where you don't really need a microscope to make the diagnosis because you can see the purple masses on the glass slide before you slip it under the microscope. The low power shows a well circumscribed deep purple mass surrounded by a few more purple specks and at the periphery you can see a granulomatous inflammatory response with some multinucleate giant cells. Case number eight was the testicular mass from a male of 20. This lesion had a firm pale cut surface. The LDH was 577 AFP1 beta-HCG less than one and this is a classical seminoma. Classical seminomas are the most common pure testicular germ cell tumour. They occur around the age of 40. The LDH is typically raised, but the beta-HCG and AFP are usually normal. The cut surface of a classical seminoma typically resembles the cut surface of a potato. Histologically, the tumours are composed of sheets of monomorphic cells with pale cytoplasm, uniform nuclei and prominent nucleoli. 
On low power, you can see the infiltrating classical seminoma on the right of the field, and as we zoom towards the left, you can see intratubular germ cell neoplasia, where the seminiferous tubules contain the seminoma cells. At higher power, you can see the sheets of cells with uniform nuclei and fairly abundant pale cytoplasm. And at a higher power, the prominent nucleoli are obvious. So when you receive the test disc for examination, a clue to the diagnosis is the markers, as in this case, just a raised LDH with everything else normal, and the age of the patient. In seminomas, the typical age is around 40. Briefly, the important take-home message is that seminomas occur at a later age than teratomas, so the S in the sergeant stands for S in seminoma, implying that seminomas tend to occur at the same age that people will become sergeants, whereas teratomas occur at a younger age in the late teens or early 20s, same age as troops, so a T for teratoma and T for troops. Case number nine was an 18-year-old man with a testicular mass that had a white, creamy cut surface. The diagnosis is lymphoma. Testicular lymphoma usually occurs around the age of 60. The gross appearance is a fleshy white cut surface resembling seminoma. And histologically, there are sheets of monomorphic cells surrounding seminiferous tubules. And the usual type of lymphoma is large B-cell lymphoma. This case is unusual because the patient was only 18 and this is actually a case of lymphoblastic leukaemia involving the testis. Having said that, the case is still a good example of what a testicular lymphoma looks like. And you can see the malignant lymphoid cells in between the seminiferous tubules and this appearance could be quite easily mistaken for classical seminoma, but of course it is crucial to get the diagnosis right because the treatment of lymphoma and seminoma is totally different. The diagnosis, of course, can be confirmed, as in this case, with the lymphoid markers. Case number 10 was a male of 49 with a testicular mass that grossly had a variegated partly cystic hemorrhagic and necrotic cut surface. The LDH was 751 AFP263 and Btrate CG 19.1. The diagnosis here is embryonal carcinoma, or to use the old term, that is the old British classification, MTU, or malignant teratoma undifferentiated. Testicular germ cell tumours are subdivided into two types. They are either seminomatous germ cell tumours or non-seminomatous germ cell tumours. This is an example of a non-seminomatous germ cell tumour. Non-seminomatous germ cell tumours are teratomas that may vary from undifferentiated, as in this case, to completely differentiated. Embryonal carcinomas tend to occur in the late teens and 20s. And although embryonal carcinomas may occur in a pure form, they are quite often associated with other elements such as yolk sac and choriocarcinoma. The tumours have a grossly cystic, hemorrhagic and necrotic appearance. And histologically, there are solid glandular and papillary patterns and the cells have a primitive malignant appearance. Here you can see malignant primitive cells forming glandular structures, and as we move towards the top right of the picture, the pink area is an area of necrosis. And at higher power, you can appreciate the pleomorphic appearance of the malignant cells. This case is slightly unusual in that the patient was 49, and this is rather older than the usual age at which these tumours occur. They occur typically in the late teens and 20s. So to briefly summarise the 
common testicular tumours. Teratomas occur at the younger stage and have raised germ cell markers, including AFP and HCG. A typical age at which seminomas occur is around 40, and pure seminomas will have normal alpha feta protein and usually normal beta HCG. Testicular masses with normal germ cell tumour markers in men over the age of 60 are most likely to be lymphoma.